This is Engineering Equation Solver. Let's start by doing something really simple. We'll say the weight of something is m, the mass of something, times a variable we'll call gravity. And let's say the mass is equal to 12 kilograms. Note that I'm putting the units in these square braces. And let's say gravity is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's go up here. We'll hit the Calculate button, or the Solve button, I should say. I can either find it here, or I could go Calculate and Solve right here. Alternatively, I can push F2 to solve the equations. And here what I've got, gravity, I've got the mass, and I've got the weight in newtons. Note that it doesn't matter what order I put the variables in. Here I've got, for example, I've got the equation first, and then I've defined the variables after it. Let's say gravity, instead of 9.81, let's just say this is a built-in constant, G-sharp, and I'll push F2 to solve it again, and now I've got the weight again in the same values, and gravity uh, here is the built-in function. Alternatively, I can get rid of this line itself, and then we'll just say the weight is equal to M times G-sharp. G-sharp is one of a number of built-in constants with ease. In this table, we show the name of the constant, its description, and its value and units in SI, and also its value and units in engineering units. And, for example, we can see in this table, G-sharp is the gravitational acceleration at sea level, has a value of 9.807 meters per second squared, and an English value of about 32.2 feet per second squared. There's a a large number of built-in constants for ease. Another one that's typically useful for heat transfer is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which has a value of 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. And so in your equations, all you have to do if you're going to use gravity, as I did, we just type in G-sharp, and it automatically includes the value and its units. Let's try it in English units. I'm going to go up here the unit system. I'll click this, and instead of SI units, I'll click English and click OK on that. And now I'll run it with English units. And what it said is I've got a unit problem uh, has been detected. And the reason for that is my G-sharp, the built-in gravity, is no longer in meter per second squared. If I, for example, just say gravity is equal to G-sharp and run it, I get a value of about 32.2 feet per second squared in English units. And if I multiply that by kilograms, of course, I get a unit problem. I could check here, say check the units, and it's telling me straight away that I'm off by a factor of 3.281. So there's something wrong with the units in this one, of course. And if we said instead of 12 kilograms, let's say it's 12 pound mass, so we'll make this in English units. And now when I run it, I still get a unit problem. So I check the units and I say, well, it's off by a factor of 7.2. Then this, it turns out, if I click up here under variable info, or I go under options variable info, I've, I've still set my weight to newtons. I expect my weight to be in pound force. So let's run it now under this, and I'm still getting this unit problem. So I look at this, and it's off by a factor of 32.2. The problem with this in English units, I need to convert. Here's a con called a convert function. And I'm going to convert from pound mass, feet per second squared, to pound force. And now when I run it, no unit problems were detected. And if I want to look at it more carefully, I can click over here, which are the formatted equations. Otherwise, I could find it up here under Windows Formatted Equations. And when I click here, it shows me the weight, mass of 12 pound mass. Here's G, 32.18 feet per second squared. And here's the conversion factor. Unlike SI units, where we say 1 kilogram meter per second squared is equal to 1 newton, there's this conversion factor in English units. So one of the powerful things about Engineering Equation Solver is that it will tell you whether or not your units work out, and it's a, a really powerful way to figure out if your, if your units are okay. There's something else we could do. Let's say we've got y1 is equal to x squared minus 1, and y2 is equal to some value of, of x. And below these, let's say x is equal to 3. I'll calculate it. Here are my values for y1 and y2 and my value of x. Well, let's graph these two functions. I'm going to click here and say new parametric table. Otherwise, I could click here under tables and say new parametric table. And in my table, I want x, y1, and y2. So I'll add these three. I'll click OK. And here's my new parametric table. So what I'm going to do is give it values. I can give it any value of x that I want. 
and I filled in arbitrary values of x. Now, for each of these lines, it will rerun the code using different values of x. However, if I run it right now, it'll give me an error, and it's saying I'm, I've already set x to a value of 3 in the code. So I'm going to get rid of this value of x. I can either just delete it entirely, or I could say, in brackets, I can comment it out, and ease will ignore that line of code. And now when I run it, I'll get different values for each value of x. Alternatively, I can click the down arrow here, and let's say my first value of x is going to start at 0, and then I'm going to run it linearly from 0 to 2, and let's say, I don't know, let's do 101 rows. I'll click OK. It says, should I add 91 rows? Let's do that. And now I've got a table with all of these different values of x. I'll click Run. Here are my values for y1 and y2 for all of those values of x. So let's make a graph of these. I'll click right here. I can say new plot window, or I could say plots, new plot window up in here. So I'll just click this button, and it's an xy plot. On the x-axis, I want x. On the y-axis, I want y1 and y2. Let's click automatic update in case I change anything in the table, and let's add a legend item. For the symbols, let's not have any symbols, and let's do some real thick lines. And here are my minimum maximum for both axes. I'll click OK. The label for the y-axis is OK. And here's a graph of those two functions. If I want to, I can take this legend and drag these things closer to the curves. If I want to, I can double-click the y-axis. And let's put a zero line here to mark where zero is indicated. Let's try to figure out where these two values, y1 and y2, are equivalent. So to do that, let's come back to here. And instead of running at x equals 3, let's say I know that y1 is equal to y2. And now when I solve it, I find that a value of x that results in y1 and y2 being equivalent is 1.618. If I click back to my chart, I see that indeed it is 1.618. If I want to, I can go to my parametric table, and I'll scroll down for a value of x that's equal to 1.6. And we see right here, right around 1.62 is where y1 and y2 are equivalent.